Okay, so since lockdown, we've all been confined to really small spaces, not being able to socialize, and one of the key components to actually doing jujitsu, <laughs> if you're a fan of that like me, is actually having a partner to train with. I haven't had a partner to train with, which is great. So this entire video is basically going to look at my entire experience of learning from scratch the lotus position in search of the notorious and almost elusive rubber guard. So I suppose you want to see some horrendous before and after shots showing how I went from this. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Ah. I, think, ah. Oh, I think I'm losing my vision. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you can't see I'm actually crying. To this. <laughs> Yeah, I thought so. So for anyone that doesn't know, the rubber guard is an extension of defensive and offensive systems within Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, which allows you to be really annoying and execute some sweet, sweet submissions by using extensive flexibility to control and submit your opponent. Now, like a lot of similar meatheads like me, who are also into jujitsu and listen to Joe Rogan's podcast, uh, sometimes you'll find that Eddie Bravo, a very good friend of his, comes on and talks about jujitsu and its development. Eddie Bravo. As in the guy who literally invented the rubber guard. So, flagrantly and very off the cuff, uh, whilst having one of these conversations of how you develop the rubber guard flexibility, Eddie Bravo then said, Oh yeah, you can actually get it by uh, practicing the lotus position. And the lotus position, for anyone that doesn't know, is that spindly pretzel-shaped entanglement your legs can find themselves in, championed by generations of wise old gurus on top of mountain tops. Also, completely off topic, but why do spiritual yoga masters always go to the top of mountains to try and find wisdom? There's no books there. Food for thought. The position is done by both legs being folded in, both feet closely resting near their hip, while the knees and bum connect with the floor. Day one. So I suppose you're wondering what my routine was. All right, I'll tell you. So like everything else in my life, I wanted to keep my expectations and goals as low as possible. So starting out, all I wanted to do was keep my feet together, move them as close towards my body as possible, and then getting my knees from their resting position down towards the floor. And in the beginning, this was a fantastic gauge for seeing how much progress I was actually making. But I am one for variety, so I did try another little stretch whereby I put my foot on top of my thigh and then tried to move my knee as close to the floor as possible. Hold the stretch for 10 seconds, or as long as you can do it without crying, and do sets of five, or again until your body just fails. How I'm not in a wheelchair, <laughs> Um, so far, I've actually noticed that I'm unflexible. There's no, there hasn't been any progress. This is my attempt after five days. Three, two, one. Now you can see in both videos that my knee isn't managing to get to the floor, despite my pushing. And apart from the experimental angle of my camera in the first video, throwing off everyone's perspective, they rest roughly around the same place. Now after doing this in my first week, these are the things that I noticed. My ankle was killing me! I was basically using it as a pivot on top of my thigh. <coughs> Couldn't keep it rolling over like that, that was not sustainable. My knees were in ridiculous amounts of pain. So I had to find a solution pretty quick for that. My bottom was starting to get a little bit sore. And because my average stretch was lasting for one hour. Yeah, that's a lot of butt time. And also, I was sweating, man. <laughs> right now, it is 100 f***ing degrees in this room. Yeah, on top of it actually being summertime right now, I was building up heat via me. That is a great reason to have a fan indoors. Oh, c'est chaud. Now, to rectify the issue I had with my ankle, I aimed to plant my heel and the ball of my foot evenly on the inside of my thigh. The theory behind this was to spread out the pressure on it through two points of contact, as opposed to the original one point via the ball area, which was then succumbing to rolling over and being the bane of my existence. Equipment check! 
So here's what I use to overcome those obstacles and started using on an almost daily basis. Knee supports. Mwah. The knee supports I got were really, really helpful with keeping my knee joints warm, but also keeping them stable. A back roller. It could substitute as a suitable pivot point instead of my ankle on my thigh. But more importantly, I could hold onto its inner edge so that I could get more leverage for the stretch. Pillows for the butt, for the ankle, for the bed. Week two. Now here's some things that I noticed in my second week. I originally tried to multitask while I was doing this because I thought, hey, my arms aren't doing anything. Let's compound the time. Turns out you really need to concentrate on the stretching. Oh, that's, that's, so, that's so brilliant. Oh, it really feels great. I'm so happy I'm doing this. You need to focus on the stretch so that you can reach your daily limit. This will most likely be really painful. <laughs> so it deserves your full amount of attention. And hopefully if you're similar to me, that added attention will actually navigate you away from injury. But what will also navigate you away from injury is not doing this at all and not taking my advice. Get advice from a professional. Simples. You need to focus on the stretches that you're doing to make sure that the joints that aren't actually supposed to bend aren't actually bending. Aka, your knee and your ankle aren't getting unnecessary pressure put on them. So at the end of the second week, I'd started to see some real improvements and my ankle had started to hurt a lot less because of the technical alterations that I'd made. Winning. Week three in the quarantine house. Let's have a look at my progress so far. This is where I start. I still have, though, all of that room. No, he still hasn't got it. Week three was when I started realizing the power of consistency. Some days I'd wake up and in the time that I would normally spend trying to push my stretchable limits out, I was now having to use that time to actually get to a point that I would have got to with ease the day before. But I found that as long as I kept stretching consistently every single day, I was still moving in the direction of progress. Even if it was a case of two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. Week four. Yeah, good job, Alex. Nice one. Consistency, consistency, consistency. Every day, every day, every day, every day. Wait, hang on a second. You really actually do need to listen to your body, kids. Because at the end of week four, this happened. That's right, I stretched so much for so long that I needed to wear support bands just to stand up straight. I feel like Bambi when I walk places. What? <laughs> this is mad. All of my joints felt really unstable, like they were made of jelly. Now for safety's sake, I couldn't do any form of leg day, any regular exercise, no running, no skipping, no jumping, no prancing. And combined with the stiffness of my hips, I was walking around like a toddler with a poopy nappy. I can't get up the stairs. Week five. Now after about three days of rest, I returned to the stretch. Physically, I had recovered, but progress wise, I had lost a lot of flexibility. I wasn't ready to start doing any obstacle courses anytime soon, but I was able to get out of bed without crying. After going through a couple of really long and overly conscientious stretching sessions, I was actually able to pick up where I left off. And by now, I was actually able to get my knees roughly to the floor. Winning! Week six. I now started to use the back roller as a tool to increase the range of my hips rotation. Now I wanted to increase the strength of this motion because the movements involved in getting into the lotus position are directly transferable to the rubber guard. And the back roller was increasing my range of motion enough that I could practice moving my bent leg in and out while it was being laid flat on the floor. I also wanted to add that because I actually gave my knee some proper time to heal, I was now actually able to take the collateral stresses from doing a bent leg stretch from the hip which was actually worrying me before because considering I'm actually planning to use this on the Jiu Jitsu mat, Fight! I kind of needed to not hurt when I was actually engaging in any of that flexibility. So uh, happy with that. Week seven. Now it was around this time that I started playing around with actually trying to put my legs into the lotus position. 
free. I was doing this by putting one foot on my inner thigh and then using the back roller under my other leg to try and work my way into position. I would also use my own arm as a fulcrum to actually levy my different limbs. Seemed to work. Week eight. Now about this time, my hip flexibility was actually really opening up. So I started slowly rocking my weight forward and backward while my legs were in position. This opened up my hips even more and basically stood as the final barrier for me attaining the lotus position. After figuring that out, it was just a matter of consistently working through that stiffness until I finally reached my goal. And then finally, after two whole months, this happened. There's no one here. Now granted, I wasn't able to hold it for long and it didn't really look very pretty. But here's the thing, I freaking did it. And I've carried on stretching and now it's got to a point where 60% of the time it works. Every time. So when lockdown ends, I am making another video because I want to see the difference between rolling with limited flexibility and rubber guard flexibility. All in all, my flexibility went from here to here. That's almost 45 degrees of extra mobility. So what's he gonna do with all that extra wiggle room I hear you say? Ninja attack! Like, share, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching this all the way to the end. I really honestly do appreciate it. You are an absolute trooper. Yes. I hope to get some more videos out there soon. Ooh. Much love. Peace.